Engaging in clean cooling solutions is critical for Singapore to achieve our climate targets of net zero emissions by or around 2050. Well, that's according to a new report by the Worldwide Fund for Nature Singapore. Well, the country is facing an increasing demand for cooling solutions more than ever as temperatures rise. The Centre for Climate Research Singapore has projected daily mean temperature could rise 1.4 to 4.6 degrees Celsius towards the end of this century. Now, this is compounded by the urban heat island effect, where buildings trap heat during the day. Well, Singapore's main cooling demand comes from commercial buildings, households, industries and data centres. Now, these are responsible for about 30% of the nation's electricity consumption as of 2019. Well, without clean cooling intervention, this number is expected to increase by 66% by 2030, and this will also lead to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. For a closer look on this, we are joined now by Swati Manloy, Market Transformation Manager from WWF Singapore. Now, Swati, this WWF report focuses on clean cooling solutions, but I'm just wondering, how can cleaner electricity sources play a role in tandem? Uh, so clean cooling, really what it means is to decarbonize our cooling systems. Cooling is a big part of life in Singapore. Um, we're a tropical country, so cooling means, you know, keeping our houses cool, but it also means keeping our food fresh and keeping our vaccines safe. So ultimately, with clean cooling technologies, what we are trying to achieve is high efficiency, making sure there's less amount of energy produced and we are using it in a very uh, efficient way. However, ultimately, cooling generation requires electricity. So without decarbonizing your grid, without using solutions like solar energy, wind energy, and perhaps even geothermal energy, you can't truly um, achieve clean cooling solutions. So it has a very direct relationship with uh, clean cooling in Singapore. All right, good. Now hold that thought for uh, a minute there, Swati. I'm going to come back to you in a short bit. I just want to touch on the WWF report identifying for clean cooling solutions for further development. There is district cooling where plants, um, plants supply chilled water to multiple buildings. And another is control systems like uh, smart thermostats and also mentioned phase change materials and cryogenic energy storage systems. Uh, now, Swati, technology like what I've just mentioned, phase change materials, cryogenic energy storage system, they're just being uh, developed and they have limited uh, commercial um, um, users at the moment. So can you just explain to us briefly in layman terms how they help in cooling and also which industries can benefit the most? Yes, of course. Um, so the two technologies that you mentioned, both phase um, change materials and cryogenic energy storage are solutions that help store cold energy. So once cold energy is already produced, can we store it either for the short term um, to long term solutions and making sure we don't have to constantly use energy to create um, cold energy and electricity, essentially. Um, so these solutions probably have the best implications at this point in time um, for certain industries. So when we talk about um, energy storage, when we talk about uh, certain industrial processes uh, requiring chemical storage at very low temperatures, that's probably where the biggest implication lies right now. However, what is really exciting is now we're already seeing in um, district cooling solutions and much more traditional solutions integration and um, of, and uh, uh, applications of these designs in anticipation of when these designs become uh, quite scalable. So ultimately, there is a lot of scope for adoption of these technologies, and we hope that this only grows in the future. Mm. Well, but it does all sound, you know, sounds well and good, but in the short to uh, medium term, realistically, realistically, just how much can they contribute to Singapore's effort, efforts? So these technologies have been around theoretically for a very long time, but where really we are is commercialization of these technologies, as in can these do they have a business case? Can we really start implementing it on different scales? So as I mentioned, for industries, probably in the short to medium term, we can still see implications of these technologies. Uh, but for commercial and even perhaps household, there is still a while for these technologies to develop um, so we can start using there. But that doesn't mean that we can't start piloting these technologies, um, creating the right research and creating the right uh, innovation spaces to help incubate these technologies so they can ultimately contribute to that 2050 decarbonization goal. Mm.
Can you just a little um, elaborate a little bit more on that? You said it's going to take a while. What exactly are the challenges that's preventing the adoption of you know clean uh, cooling solutions? And I want to talk about cost as well because that's a big thing you know as energy prices uh, go up. You're absolutely right. Cost is a very big factor because when we talk about cleaning. Uh, clean cooling solutions on a large scale, uh, one of the most important things is getting the capital. And this is a large investment and it requires quite a lot of uh, conviction from both technology uh, providers and also from the people who are deploying these technologies. The good thing though we're hearing from industry experts already is that, you know, district cooling, there have been so many demonstrations of success. So the commercialization barrier is low compared to, for example, some of the more nascent technologies. Um, but we, what we also see, what we recommend also in the report that we just launched yesterday is that we need a whole of system approach, which requires a very concerted effort from different stakeholders. And that's where really the challenge is, but that's also where the opportunity is. So besides cost, the cross-functionality, the knowledge sharing, that's, that's one of the areas where a lot more needs to be done and where a lot of benefits can come from. Now, your report also suggests that the biggest opportunities to adopt clean cooling interventions exist in the commercial building sector. Why so? So when we assessed where the biggest cooling demand lies and where the technologies to address those cooling demands are, naturally, commercial building sector came out top in front. So right now... Um, more than 40% of cooling demand for Singapore comes from this sector. And even though other sectors are going to go, grow much more rapidly, um, commercial real estate sector is still going to be one of the most uh, major sources of cooling demand even in 2030. So keeping that in mind and seeing already the market solutions we have, including district cooling and smart technologies to digitize and understand our cooling demand, this automatically becomes kind of the one area where we have the greatest opportunity for intervention. Good to know. That was very informative. Thanks very much for your time. Swati Manloy from WWF Singapore.